Men for an adult audience. Love line may contain sexually oriented content. Content. Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love line. Love line. Coast to coast. Hey, everybody. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician. Digs and measures. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Thanksgiving special. Oh man. Guess I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. let you cranberries. let you venture a guess here, Drew. Cranberries. Yeah, answer every, got, every, got, every question that your answer is cranberries. For me, for me. Oh boy, did I make a huge pot of those cranberries <laughs> tonight? I used four sacks of cranberries. It's a mammoth amount of cranberry sauce. But Drew, nah. take a little guess as to uh, whether the power was on or not oh, when I got my. home last night. No. Of course it wasn't. Yeah. Because, you know why it wasn't? Because we talked about it. Now, do you know you know the real reason why? No. Because the Transformer blew. No. Because John from System of a Down gave me the Taboo 2 DVD. Oh, my God. See, that sealed yeah, my fate. Yeah, but we had a backup plan. You were going to take your little portable CD player and plug it in the car. Cigarette lighter. Cigarette lighter, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't want to... It's a cloth interior. Oh, yeah. All oh, the humanity. It, the uh, headliner on the season. Oh, room, my it's, God. It's low. Uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's a low-profile car. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to ruin that. You didn't drive to the valley, the, the party house? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. I sat there with a flashlight in my mouth like I was uh, tunneling out of prison, reading Car and Driver and uh, drinking red wine and listening to uh, AM radio on one of those emergency radios that you wind up. Oh my God. And by the way, don't ever, don't anyone get one of those wind-up radio flashlight things. Yeah, okay, here, here's what you do. Here's the real problem with the wind-up flashlight radio thing. Yeah. There's about 30 safety features in there that you don't really need. There's like a homing beacon and a and a siren and stuff. So you're sitting at one in the morning in your completely dark house. There's a candle that's 10 feet away. That's the only illumination and thing. All of a sudden, you think you're flicking it onto FM, and it's like. Woo! And, and you're, for fi- you're, c- you're fiddling with the thing, trying to trying to get it to s- get the siren to stop and the beacon to stop flashing. And things aren't weird enough already with your dark uh, you room. See, with the and you're light. sitting there cranking the thing like you're making ice cream, oh, and you're oh. just looking like a jackass. Like oh. at least die with some dignity. Now, now you're just sitting there cranking. It's and the wheel's really small. And just, here's oh. the deal: you crank for 45 minutes, you get to listen to 30 seconds of Art Bell. Oh. That's that's the trade-off. So you're just sitting there. And it's like, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm going to kill myself. It was it cold? Did you have to light a fire or something? No, it wasn't. I did, yeah, I did, I did crank up a fire, but it wasn't that cold. I just wanted some light. Mm. I'm just sitting there all alone. What was your wife doing? She's sleeping. I, 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 horrible. No TV, nothing. But now here's the next thing. Mm. I said to myself, well, this power is going to turn on. But it'll, it'll never turn on. Like, it'll never turn on at 12.30 when I'm right. standing at home. Of course not. And you know what I actually even did? Uh. As I stared out the window at my dark city, I did a thing like Merlin with my hand. <laughs> I, said, I said, what if, wouldn't it be cool if you just went like, ta-da, and all the lights came back on? And I was like, why don't you try that? And then I was like, are you high? That's not going to work. And I was like, what else are you doing? Cranking your radio? So I did like three, like, Papa, <laughs> with the hand out right, in front Mer- of me. The Merlin. The, the Shut Merlin. up! It was like nothing. Did you try to get a little wand? No, I didn't get the. I don't have a wand, but I used a spatula from the kitchen. Spatula, yeah, sorry, now I got nothing going with that, but uh, the power did ultimately come on tonight. <clears throat> Last night. Last yeah. night. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What time? Four a. Four. Mm. Four a. That was when I went. <laughs> <laughs> Lights still going at Adam's house. Drew flipped over with a boner. But uh, and my the uh, the lights went on in Hollywood. Yeah, four a.m. And there, I know the reason. The reason you picked four a.m., Drew. Because that's the one and a half hours during which you're asleep. Yeah, that is the worst time for yeah. it to come on. And if 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 I could have arranged it so the television could have popped on again, I could have actually interrupted the <laughs> the two hours of sleep that you normally guess get. what popped on at full blast again at four a.m. Yeah. Mission accomplished. That's right. Yeah. The TV. After seeing uh, after seeing the circle. Was no, there anything weird? The ring. 
No, this was just another channel that was just as loud because I didn't turn it down because the first time at 5.30 in the morning the night before when I went to shut it off, I hit mute and then shut it off. Huh. And then when it turns back on, it overrides the mute, and it was just as loud. So, great. 4 a.m. <laughs> this close to breaking out the Taboo 2 at 4 a.m., but I said, don't oh, forget it. Because I know if I bust out the Taboo 2, power's going out again. Oh, yeah, good yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't so wanna, why bother? I didn't want to tempt fate that way. All right, let's... Uh, but I was thinking to myself when I think, as soon as I went to bed, I thought, this power's coming on in the middle of the night again, and something's coming on. I don't know if it's going to be the blender. I don't know if it's going to be the what TV, but I'm getting out of bed again. <laughs> what could you do to protect yourself? <sighs> Nothing, huh? Jesus Christ. You couldn't turn off a TV that wasn't What's on. What's wrong? What's wrong? Goddamn power out since uh, 1.30, 1 in the afternoon. Got to come in at 4 a.m. What is that with the power at the 4 a.m. and the 5 a.m. and the earthquakes? 445, yeah, 515. Can't they have a goddamn earthquake at 4 in the afternoon? Never. Never? It never happens. Like, I can't have a pair of goddamn pants on when something happens. I got to be standing around in a boner wearing a towel during everything in this goddamn city. Do you know what I'm saying? Something like Everyone rushing out wearing a bathrobe with their hair and curlers and stuff. Every time something happens, everyone's in a bathrobe or their underpants. I may be misquoting the, the exact number, but somewhere at 80% plus of earthquakes are within an hour of sunrise or sunset. Either side. <sighs> it, just, it just can't have one. Can't have an earthquake after I just got done zipping up my pants and tying my shoes. Can't have that. No. And can't have any of this stuff happen while I'm lucid. No, you gotta be loaded. I gotta be loaded in a in a in a catatonic, dreamlike state, and hearing noises, feeling shaking, imagination running wild. It's the most tra traumatizing too when it's like that, right? Yes, it is your, because your pulse, you can't process what's going your, your on. Your pulse goes from forty to one hundred and forty. Oh, yes, yes, you yeah. go from from Disney's Frozen head yes. <laughs> to a, a pigeon being chased by a, a Doberman. Uh, That's what your heart rate goes from. Yeah. Yes. Very unpleasant. Yes, yeah. If, if, uh, earthquake happened at noontime when I was sitting on the sofa. I'd go, hey, earthquake. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Instead of the Nazis are attacking or whatever the hell goes through my mind at 5 in the morning when I'm in uh, the sixth cycle of REM. Rachel? Hey, Adam. You're 17? Yeah, I'm 17. Adam? Yes. You are really cool, Drew. You're awesome, too. Thanks, Rachel. Okay, Rachel. My question is really for you, Adam, but can I ask Drew a quick question first? Just just go and put it out there. We'll okay. deal with it as we deal with it. Um, if I drink a bottle of Motrin, will that kill me? It could. Why? Bottle what's of the, Motrin? What's the plan here? What? Wait, they have a bottle of Motrin? What, like 30 tablets or 60 tablets? No, like like the liquid, the children's Motrin. Oh, the children's Motrin. That's why I said drink. Uh, I didn't know they made it liquid yeah. form. Do you know how big a bottle and how many milligrams per cc is in the bottle? Um, I can check. I mean, are you trying to kill yourself? That's the plan, but okay. I was just wondering. All right, so that, that's the much bigger issue. It's not... you got to kill yourself? Is it guaranteed? Like, because I don't want to... You don't want to mess it up. Right. No, it's yeah. definitely not guaranteed. Oh, it's not? No, no guarantee. Yeah. If I drink two bottles, it's like, what's mm -hmm. guaranteed? I'm not going to give you the guarantees, but I can tell you for sure Motrin would not. Motrin will give you a nice kidney failure and a miserable life. Oh, so yeah. what about Tylenol or something? I don't, we're not going to talk about it. I don't know. Talk about yeah. it. If you're okay. good. If, if, what's like the least someone should weigh if they're five, three and a half? So you have an eating disorder the and The least? Yeah. Five, three and a half? Oh. 88 pounds. Well, you mean the least? That's like Auschwitz least. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it's like you die if you're a pound under this, right? Is that what you're talking about? There's no you such should say number. a higher number. There's no such number, than, but but uh, okay. the problem is, so why are we answering these questions? We got to find out what's going oh, on. All right. Um, what, okay, Adam. What's with your eating disorder, Rachel? What? How long you had an eating disorder for? I don't. I don't know. How long? Since like the ninth grade. Ninth grade, and have you had to be hospitalized for it? What? Have you had to be hospitalized for it? No, people don't know about it, really. Mm. Do people know about your depression? No. What's and, up? And yet you're thinking about killing yourself. What? And yeah, you're... I, um, you know, I have a plan, whatever. Just... The, the Motrin plan? Mm, no, just the, you know, killing myself, but I'm not oh, going yeah. to do it yet. Well, I mean, I'm going to give you a, a, a tip. If you are trying to kill yourself, stay away from the stuff that, you know, labeled children's <laughs> on it, you know? I mean... 
You know what I mean? It's probably not the most effective way. Are things happening in your life that are making... Yeah, I'll, I'll get the other one because that's probably better. Yeah, you don't things, get the children's one. Are things one. happening in your life that are making you depressed right now? Kind of, yeah. Like what's happening? It's, it's not really like <laughs> things. It's just, you know, my parents, they're really, really strict. They're, we're Jewish and they're like, oh my God, they're like so... They're like, they don't let me do anything. Really? So you, this killing yourself is more... Jews never kill themselves. Mm. They're like real fanatics. They're, and I'm just not like... Are they fanatic fanatics. religious or they're yeah, just... Yeah, yeah. Is it all religious or, or are they just sort of high strung? No, no, no. They're, like, they're not bad people or anything. They're just so into their religion that it's crazy. Could you consult with their rabbi to get some help? You know, the, how to deal with a child that maybe is not as into it as they are? No, yeah, they don't believe in that stuff. They were just trying to make me like them. I know what they're like. Well, wait, wait. Yes. What, do, what do they want you to do? Are they Hasidic Jews? Yeah. Ooh. And what do, what do you guys... Oh. <laughs> All that crazy stuff, Adam. You know, I swear to Christ, it's a, you know, when my power was out last night, I was sitting around at 12.30 staring at a candle and uh, reading a magazine next to a candle, and I was like, this is how the Hasidim live on Saturdays. This is it, Right. No, no power or anything, right? No, no, you can leave the lights on. You, you just can, can't turn them on. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> and you guys can do wash, but you got to put your washing machine on a timer, right? <laughs> well, don't you think that's a little crazy? Yes, I know. That's what I keep telling all these religious idiots about. <laughs> it can't turn. And whenever it I can't turn stuff on and off. Oh, oh, listen uh -oh. to this. Oh, 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 my God. Yes, what do they say when you quote Adam Carolla? They, they're like, where do you get these crazy ideas? And they, they never, I'm like always quoting Adam. No, they're like, oh. fair, go him. Yeah. All right, listen, Rachel, you, uh, you're you not going to kill yourself. That's a horrible, horrible plan. Horrible. How else? Are we going to go to the prom if you kill yourself? Uh-huh. Yeah? Uh, no one will know I'm gone. Don't worry. Uh, I'll know when uh, when I'm not, when I don't have a prom date come uh, June. Right? You'll take your wife. Okay, anyway. Oh. <laughs> Rachel, here's your plan. You, you, you get a good grade in school, you go away to college. Yeah. That's your plan. They're not okay with college because college is co-ed. Oh, oh. What do they want you to do? I don't know. They want me to go to, like, an all-girls seminar. Well, what do, you, what do you do now? Do you go to school? Yeah. An all-girls religious all, all school. Girl, all-girls religious school. Yeah. Okay. Rachel, what, what you need to do is I know you want your parents to listen to you, and they won't listen to you. No, I gave up. I know what they're like. I gave up on them. You know, I might as well face reality. They're never going to... Yeah, but family. don't... But you're, you're facing... You're giving up, but you're still acting out upon them by acting out on yourself. Yeah. You're going to aggress against them by hurting yourself. You ever as see? So that's the only way you could do it. Yeah. You ever see that remake of the jazz singer? No. What no. happens? Neil. What jazz singer. Huh? What jazz singer? Neil Diamond plays a jazz singer. His dad is a rabbi. Doesn't want him, doesn't want him to go into entertainment. Wants him to be a rabbi. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, you got to rent that, Rachel. Give you some perspective. Does he try to kill himself? Uh, yeah. Drink uh, 70 gallons of children's... Uh, Ask for gum. <laughs> yeah, he chewed up. No. Listen, Rachel. Yeah. Listen, baby. Come on. No killing yourself. That's a ridiculous idea. And you've got to find somebody to talk to at that school and explain to them what's going on. Right, exactly. There's no one that shares my views. Whatever. Anyway, Adam. Yeah. Um, my, there's this guy. He's 18. He claims he doesn't masturbate. It yeah. cannot be like you're always saying, you know. No. Be. Well, think of who she hangs around with. Oh, well, it could be. Yeah. It may his, uh, like, uh, payos gets in the way. No, no, no. He, he's not Jewish. Oh, okay. You know what's funky? When you see those... Uh, he, he's seven, having, he may not be a master, he's having omissions, though. <laughs> you see those 17-, uh, 18-year-old Hasidic Jew teenage guys? Yeah. And they got the beard? As if teens weren't funky, funky enough. enough yeah. yeah. Hey, let's put the uh, crazy Fidel Castro beard and the uh. funky... Uh, the, the, the funky shaker and Quaker hat on this guy. Oh. Mm. Like you don't have enough difficulty getting laid at seventeen, you've just sealed your your fate, my friend. I, I swear to Christ, you know what I think the Jewish religion is really about? Let's make our kids so goofy that they just never get laid. Like we'll 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 save them from premarital sex. Here, grow this crazy beard and put this crazy hat on. <laughs> They're really smart. Mm. They keep their kids out of trouble. They, they just. 
the, the religion is so goofy, no one will have sex with these people. I mean, I, 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 you couldn't get laid in high school with a pair of OP shorts and a hang ten shirt, right, Drew? No. Forget about that Quaker hat oh. and a crazy beard. Oh, my God. Now, what's Rachel going to do? I, I, well, Rachel's so smart. She's going to outwit everybody. You know, if we yeah. send somebody to go get her, she'll right. deny it. Right. So what? Don't kill yourself. Talk to somebody. Talk to somebody, but really... Make some friends, get a, too. Get a friend. Find your way out. It's, it's a great escape. You know what I mean? You're, 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 you're 17, by the way. You're on the cusp of just of just turning them, 18 yeah, and leaving. Go to hell. Just get out of there. Just pack but your go bags to and leave. Go to the school you pl want to go to. All right. Nathan? Yeah. You're 20... 20. Yes, sir. Is that 20? Yep. What's hey, happening? Hey, Tara. Uh, wait a minute. Where's Brian? He's uh, with All his right. family. Tara and Lauren, don't do the uh, zero with the dot in it. Do an O. Do an O for yeah. the 20 yeah. on the it, zero it part. Lauren, Lauren's not used to typing. Because uh, it looks like an yeah. 8 from yeah. here. Idiots. Not you people. The people who figure out the font. Yeah. We'll put the dot in the middle of it so uh, people won't think it's an O. Yeah, everyone will think it's an 8 then. Jesus Christ, Drew. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So what if they think it's an O? 20? O? Two O? What could this be? God damn it. All right, what's up, Nathan? All right, here's my problem. I've been dating my girlfriend for almost two years now. We'll turn, I think, two years in December. And we started having sex six months into our relationship. Is she, is she 20 also? No, she's 18. She's 18 now, so she was 16 then. Um, yeah, yes. Or she had just turned 17. Mm -hmm. When you started having sex? Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. And it was going smooth. We were, you know, having no problems, you know, all the time. And then all and of a then, sudden... And I mean, you know, not like every day, you know, maybe twice, three times a month. We're both very religious. Um, <laughs> but, um... <laughs> kind of breaking the rules there, though. Yeah. You're no yeah. Jew, though, right? No, I'm not a Jew. All right. Go ahead. No. They wouldn't think of having sex every, twice a week. That would be non-religious. Twice yeah. a month they're doing it. Yeah. Well, they're religious. All right. Go ahead there. But uh, it, after a while, she's just kind of like, you know, she just got kind of paranoid, I guess. I don't know, kind of scared to where she didn't want to. I mean, like, I like she thought she was going to get pregnant or she thought she was going to get caught? She both, really. All right. Well... It, it sort of proves the case in point is that a 18 year old woman is not getting that much out of sex. No, they, they really aren't. And if they've got big reasons to not do it, whether it's belief or God knows what, you know, some uh, some 18 for an 18 year old chick, sex is like a it's it's like a job that doesn't pay. Right. Not a whole lot of incentive to show up Monday morning. They don't orgasm. They, it's the closeness, but they prefer the closeness. And the guys sort of cut out the closeness and go right for the sex. So they lose that. Right, eventually. Yeah. The closeness that the guys exhibit at the beginning is trying to get in the pants. Once right. they get in the pants consistently, they that's just it. eliminate that, un you know, that's fat that gets trimmed. Yeah. Right. It, you don't need so that. she's not getting much out of this, and she has a lot of reason not to do it, so she decided not to. And here's the other part, too. An 18, 20-year-old guy. See, see, Drew, you could figure it out now. <clears throat> if right. you could, If you could take your... Uh, 42 year old ass ass and brain <laughs> and dork back into time and be 19 years old again yeah and you had an 18 year old chick that was losing a little interest sexually yeah. oh you'd work it out <laughs> do you know what i'm saying yeah you'd know sort of where to go you'd work yeah, it out yeah You're like baby let me give you a massage and put some music Flowers. on and you'd just be working it nice and slow and <clears throat> you'd have her going again you could you could respark that fire. At at twenty, as a guy, it's like I better move my ass faster. Yes, she probably wants it harder. Yeah, I could give it to her gooder, and uh, then that 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 doesn't work for you. No. All right. So what's Nathan need to do? Uh, respect her wishes. All right. That's all he can do. Nathan. Yeah. That's it. You got to listen to her. Okay. I hope she's not trying to break up with you. No, no. Um, we plan on. Uh in the near future, somewhat getting engaged, getting married. Somewhat all right, engaged. all right, buddy. You know, right. <clears throat> how's it going? What do you, what do you, what are you doing? Um, I am right now. 
I am on break right now from school from Emma Tech right now, so. All right. And she's going to Tyler, so there's a big, long-distance relationship there, but, I mean, we're... Tyler? Like Tyler, Texas? Yeah. What are, was she uh, majoring in, uh, hickory smoking or barbecue <laughs> or basting or <laughs> what, flame broiling? What do you do over at Tyler, Texas, you? Well, actually, It's a barbecue curriculum, right? <laughs> 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 All right. There's ribs, chicken, beef ribs, pork Well, ribs. I, I have a, I, I major in, uh, like, what do you do over at Tyler, Texas, hey. you? Hey, Anderson, I could hear something, that. Something's wrong, right? <laughs> We're going to hear ourselves back. What's your major? Uh, I have a major in baby backs with an emphasis <laughs> in uh, spare ribs. <laughs> New major in Cajun. <laughs> And so I'm just, uh, you know, all when I hear Tyler, Texas, I just think about barbecuing. Yeah. I don't know that there's people that live there. I don't know that they there's anything else. There's any industry there. I just picture one huge barbecue. <laughs> like if I if I fly over Tyler, Texas, I picture a giant grill. Yeah, and you smell it. Thirty thousand yeah. feet still. Right. Mmm. All right. Let's uh, go to uh, Matt, who's twenty three. Hello, right? Adam Drew. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Um, I d oh, hi, Adam. Um, I, I love this show, and I think um, Adam should do more lightning rounds. Yeah, uh, lightning uh, rounds. Matt. No, now you're in trouble, man. What? I may be doing one tonight. You are? Seriously? That's that's awesome. Well, I, no! I wouldn't have thought of it, but now That'd that you made up. me think about it, yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad. Um, but my question was, well, I was listening a few months ago, and... You know how Drew likes to look at books, like while you're trying to answer a call, he'll look at the anatomy book in the dictionary, and it yeah. bugs you. But one day um, you said that he could find a word in the dictionary faster than anybody um, anybody else in the world. And then, But I thought that maybe I could find one even faster than Drew. He's gay. You do sound like a guy who could find one fast. Yeah. Um, not using the internet, right? Not a dictionary. No, no, I'm, I, have a, I have a real dictionary here. Yeah, yeah. Bang, bang it against the phone. Okay, hold on. All right. The, did that sound like a dictionary? No, that's, it sounded like you take a receiver and bang it on the No, that, that's, table. That's, that's no, sound, I'll that's drop it on the floor. It'll there make we go. Really, there we go. That sounds like an encyclopedia really to me. Yeah, yeah. There, okay. All right, no, that's right. a dictionary. Yeah, yeah, that was a dictionary. Okay, Matt. Well, hold on a second. Okay. Because uh, Drew will accept your challenge. He has his dictionary here. Okay, but here. it can't be like a really hard to spell medical word because that, no. because uh, then that would then give advantage. an unfair yes. advantage. You're right. Then I get an advantage. No, and I'll tell you what. We'll do two out of three. Okay. All right. We'll pick. Uh, I'll pick three words. I'll uh, I'll figure them out. I had some. Uh, I'll pick a couple of basic ones. You know, people never pick a dog or cat. You know, that that takes just as much skill to pick out. Yeah, it doesn't really matter the word. All right. We'll do we'll do two out of three when we come back. All right, man. Sounds good. little background on you, though, Matt. College student? Um, a dropout college student. Totally unmotivated. Mm -hmm. Working in a video store? No, no. I'm a word processor. Marijuana, yes or no? What's that? Marijuana? No, no, no marijuana. But no. I'm, a, I'm a little drunk. All right. All right. Good. Kid's feeling cocky. Drew likes him juiced up because uh, it's that kind of false confidence that uh, makes him call, but that actually slows the hand-eye sure, coordination yeah, sure. down when they're yeah. thumbing through the dictionary. But then if I lose, I feel that much worse. <laughs> Got some <laughs> drunken dropout who, by the way, is calling uh, from New York, so two it's you morning. know 2 in the morning, and he just put a licking on the sober Drew. All right, we'll take a quick break, and it's uh, best uh, two out of three when uh, we play... Oh, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Find that word! <laughs> hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That is uh, Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. All right. All right. It's time to play uh, Race Dr. Drew in the Dictionary. Now, Drew... I noticed you opening the dictionary to the center. This is like stretching out. I'm, I'm going to have to ask you to close the dictionary. Part of the deal. All right. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to need your hands on the side of the chair. Okay. So we're speaking to Matt. Yep. Yeah. Matt. Yes. You would like to uh, race Drew mm -hmm. in the uh, dictionary game? Yes. Yeah, so what do I do? Do I just say like? 
Um, do I read the definition when yes. I found it? Just yes. yes. It you, you, must, you, must sh you must shout your name. <laughs> you must yell Matt. And then you must immediately read the definition. That's why okay. it's got to be a hard name. Or a hard word, I mean. Well, why? Because they're both going to find it too fast? Well, Matt can just lie and say, like, if you say cat, it'd be like, uh, an animal, a female, you know. Yes, but I'm not very articulate. No, so, it, it's... So I it, couldn't think of a, a good, it, like, it's diff dictionary. It, even if people know what a cat or, or a dog or whatever is, uh, it's still to simulate the dictionary version off the top of your head is going to be difficult. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree, Drew? Let's, let's pick out dog and see what they say. Just and make uh, pick out... Pick out dog or cat, Drew. And uh, meanwhile, Drew is using this as an excuse to warm up, clearly. Dog, a highly variable domestic mammal. Canine. Yeah. See, you wouldn't come up with that. You'd be like, uh, what is uh, Scooby-Doo? <laughs> All right. And uh, it says here, Scrappy-Doo, too, as well, his cousin. I like it when you talk like Mr. Mooney and Scooby-Doo, also. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mooney. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? The hands yep. at the side. Now, and Drew, you yell your name out. Hands, hands at your side. <clears throat> All right, Matt? Dictionary's closed. I'm ready. Hands by your side. You're not making contact with the dictionary? Not at all. Okay. The first word is spindle. Spindle. Drew. Drew. Spindly spindle, a any of a genus of often evergreen shrubs. Spindle tree. Mm. Do you want that or plain spindle? All right. Spindle, a round stick with tapered ends used to form and twist the yarn in the hand spinning. All right. That's more what I was looking for. But I said a well, rounded I rod of wood, but Drew beat me. All right. All right. He just he just edged you by about two and a half times the amount of time it took you to do. Dictionary is closed. But Drew's a big S man. <laughs> <laughs> and he's also an ass man, you know? You know how Drew knows he's an ass man, Matt? How's that? Because when people say, hey, hey, that Drew? Yeah, he's an, an ass man. He's an ass man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, Matt? Yeah. We're going to try another word. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Halibut. Halibut. Ooh, I'm losing it here. <laughs> Ooh, not good. Halibut. There you go. Matt. Matt, yes. Any of various large edible flounders, especially of the genus Hippoglossus. <laughs> All right. Drew, did you find halibut? Uh, I stopped looking, but yes, it's... Interesting. 1-1 in one, one a best two out of three showdown. A marine food fish that is the largest flat fish. All right. All right, Matt, it sounded sounded like a uh, a good answer to me. <laughs> and it wouldn't be BS either because he wouldn't have taken that long. It took a little while. No, it was good because I, I got lost in the gym. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, now this one's interesting. This may not be a word you guys are familiar with. You ready, Matt? Th ready. This is for the best two out of three. Are you poised? I'm poised. Hands uh, down by your side, not making contact with either a dictionary or Bible? No. All right, you ready? The word is solenoid. Uh -oh. Solenoid. I'm not sure how to spell it. Oh, this is going to be I interesting. This one, yeah, I'm not sure to spell it. Matt may not know either. Okay. Cylindroid, a solid having the form of a cylinder. Actually, no. Oh. You said cylindroid. Oh, really? I said cylenoid. Oh. And plus, you must yell your name out first. Don't. <laughs> Did I pick a word that wasn't in there? It may not be. It's kind of a technical word, right? It's like in your car. Yeah, it's a car part. No, it's, I, I may not be spelling it right. If it's spelled like cylinder, I don't think it's... No, like it's spelled with an uh, S. Uh, bye -bye. Bye -bye. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> may have felt... Well, you both heard me say that. I don't think it's in here. No, you know what? It's no. solenoid. Oh. Yeah, I say solenoid, but most people say solenoid, but I think it's spelled like solenoid. But spelled take, how? take a look for it anyway. Look for an SOL. Uh, hey, Matt? Yeah. I'm, I'm, we're going into the bonus round with a bonus word. Okay. All right? Okay. Let's solenoid got two L's? Uh, no, I don't think so. 
All right, you ready? Wait, wait, I'm still looking up Solon. Okay, Drew's looking up Solon. I'm going to think of another word. Good radio. I'm going to be sitting here looking at stuff. Yeah. No, it's not in here. All right. Yeah, do a better word. All right. All right, you ready? Mm-hmm. Wait. Now, Drew has... Now, Drew shut his. Again, you're both... It's 1-1. One, one. This is to find out who is the king of the geeks. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> uh, recline. The word is recline. Recline, Matt. Oh, oh Matt! Sure. To lean back or lie, rest in That's a recumbent position. Oh, true. Uh, <laughs> Snake. Are permitted to incline backwards. By a drunken 23 year old. Who's unemployable. Humiliated. And hasn't been laid in 14 months. <laughs> yes, Matt. So that means we get to do the lightning round. Right? Don't forget. All right, buddy. I'm going to dedicate it to you. Great. All right. Well, Drew, you started off strong. And faded. You smoked them on the first one. Yeah. Yeah. I think I screwed everyone up, up with my solenoid pr- pronunciation of solenoid. Mm. But, uh... Someone with a technical dictionary can look that up and uh, give us the uh, spelling on it. Or someone who works at a, at a pet Car voice. Part, yeah. <laughs> Nick? Hi. Um, my girlfriend, she's 15. She's about three months older than me. She uh, She's sexually active, and she has been for about three years now, she says. Since she was 12? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so she obviously wouldn't uh, be able to get your... Um, I'm in discount, but uh, mm-hmm. not yeah. eligible. But uh, and I'm not. I'm still a virgin. He's eligible. Mm-hmm. Yes, I am. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was wondering because she's coming over tomorrow night, and I'm worried that she's going to want me to have sex with her, even though I'm not sure if I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Why would she? Do? Why would she want you to have sex with her? She's coming over for a little stuffing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh. I would assume that if she's been sexually active for three years and uh, Nick knows about this, that that's what's on her agenda for tomorrow night. Yeah, so she, right. What's she coming over for? Is she going to eat with you guys? My parents are in town tomorrow. Oh. Parents are out of town on Thanksgiving? Well, 15-year-old girls don't come over with the intention to have sex. They're always surprised when that's on the guy's <laughs> Hold on, though. menu. Hold on. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Screwy uh, ones that have been getting laid since 12. Even though, can. even though they come in, they provoke that, and then they're confused when it when it comes about mm, when they got a response to they, it. They 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 got the math down just a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Nick. Yeah. Why aren't you with your parents on Thanksgiving? Because my mom's going to see a daughter she adopted out of the family when she was born. So. And so why aren't you with her? Because we're not able to afford the cost of two tickets. Mm. Where's She's your dad? Huh? Where's your dad? Not in the picture. So, your mom's just leaving you home alone? I'm 14 and I have two older sisters, so... Oh, what are the older sisters going to be doing? They're going to be... Uh, they're going to let me sleep here alone. You know, they're not stupid, but they kind of are. You, 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 uh, do they live with you? No, my sisters live... Okay, well, hold on a second. I, what a weird situation. I know, but... Our question is, is your mom is leaving you home alone? No, I have two older sisters. Yeah. Oh, okay. They live there? No. No. And they're going to leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. It's huh. like, yeah, that's what's kind of what we're saying, though, right? Nick, I mean, your mom's leaving you alone. Yeah. And she does she think your sisters are sleeping over? No. So your mom is just leaving you alone? I'm old enough to sleep on my own. Okay. Yeah. Do, you, do you live in an apartment? No, it's my house. Like, a house that we bought. Hold on a second. What's wrong with Nick? I don't know, but it's something. Either it's bogus, or he is sort of living a deprived life and doesn't really <laughs> understand. I think I think he's poor, and he thought Adam was making fun of him with the apartment thing. Oh, Nick. Yeah? You think I was making fun of you? Just a little. No, I'm saying... If I, had around, a, if, yeah. if I had a 14-year-old who lived in an apartment complex, I could see leaving them for there are people around, neighbors nearby, that kind of thing. you just kind of in their yeah. house. I come back and place me on fire. Yeah. No, I don't touch fire. I don't like fire at all. See that literal no. concrete thinking. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, it's, it's, amazing. Mm-hmm. it's shocking. Yeah. It hasn't been laid this, at this yeah. point far in life. So, Nick. Yes. 
the, the question well, is... Why'd you, why'd you call why him? Do you want, why did you bother him? He's, 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 Sorry. He's, he's resting tonight, and you called and disturbed his evening. Nick, what do you want from us? I want to know, because I'm not sure if I should or shouldn't. I want to know from you guys. If you're not ready, don't do it. And 14 is off. Don't, don't get anyone stuff. pregnant. Well, yeah. The, All right, buddy. And also, one more thing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite part of the show. <laughs> it's the only thing I have left. Rob, one yes, more sir. thing. Oh, by the way, listen, all you snot-nosed, smart-ass, 14-year-old teenage males who call this show. You think you're going to be a snot, snot-nosed punk for uh, three and a half minutes and then slide the one more thing in? And I'm going to be sitting on pins and needles? Hold on. King Nick's got one more thing to say. Can't wait now. Yeah, we got to hear exciting. it. Exciting. Oh, I won't be able to sleep tonight if I don't hear what uh, 14-year-old Nick has hey, to say. Derek, by the way, called in with a solenoid. S-O-L-E-N-O-I-D. Yeah. Well, I said S-O-L. Yeah. I said solenoid. Yeah, yeah. You said two L's, and I said no. Right. We're right there, right? Oh, yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not in the dictionary is what you're saying, yeah, Drew. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, buddy. All right. Go ahead. Sorry, Rob. That's okay. Um... My question is, I have I have a pretty thick predicament here. Thick. Um, mm -hmm. I'm 29, and um, I I've kind of messed up a relationship with somebody that I'm, you know, I, I know I didn't think I was in love with at first because of a lot of problems I was having, but after she left, I kind of realized that she was probably the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. What yeah. kind of what kind of problems were you having? Well, I, it's a long story, but... All right. You know, I'll take just, your word for it. To, yeah. Just to throw it all in short, um, I was I was a bum in the bars, working in a bar and drinking drunk every day. And I went to college, graduated college, got a job. And I met her on the computer about, about a year ago. And uh, she moved out to Colorado with me. And after I graduated... I got this good job here in Alabama, and I moved her here. Yeah. And, you know, and what? all the stress from moving away from my family. Sure. And starting a new job. What's the status now of your relationship? Uh, she moved away. All right. Anything? About yeah. two months ago. And how far did she move away? She moved to Florida. And you're an hour and a half away. You're in Alabama. Did things get kind of uh, chaotic between you two? Uh, not really. Is she, just, is she seeing any? Is she seeing anybody? Uh, yeah. She is. All right. Yeah. Time to forget it. Yeah. Move on, Rob. Leave her alone. How long were you guys sort of going back and forth? Well, we were steady together for about nine months. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about getting married, and she was talking about having a baby and right. and everything, and I kind of... All right. You, you screwed it up. Well, yeah. Where, where is she at now? When's the last time you spoke to her? Uh, two weeks ago when she picked up her stuff. What <laughs> What did she say? She said, I, I asked her if there was any chance of us getting back together. And she said, you know, basically of all the people I had, I had a good chance of getting her back. I just had to... Of all the people? Of, How many know, people are lying to get her back? In, you know, if, if anybody had a chance, I had the better chance of getting her back. Better than... Suggest there's Anybody someone. Else. Well, who else is vying for living, that? dead, historical f figures? Living. Abraham Lincoln, living. MacArthur, guys like that. Living, living. So she has other guys that she's broken up with that are interested no, in restoring was, a relationship uh, with her. Look, look, that was that was so much. It, let me tell you what that answer was. That was uh, denial. Please oh. don't put a shiv in me before I get the last box out of this goddamn apartment. Right. That was uh, that was one of those. You know the conversations you have where you're, wh wh while you're walking? Yeah. That was one of those where you're like, hey, what do I, hey, let's have a life. Let's have a life. <laughs> you're like chugging, you know, and people are box, talking or carrying something. And people are like, what do you think about us getting back together? Well, I'll tell you what, you're, uh, you guys good chance. Anybody else? Bye. You See you later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll tell you, you're uh, definitely in the top ten. We'll call you front runner, but it's definitely up there. Yeah, this is this is while you're schlepping stuff out. Yeah, that's that's the, that's this kind of answers you give when you don't want to stop. Oh my god. Hey Rob. Yeah. You got to move on, buddy. Yeah. Well, she's she's seeing somebody. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, she says they're not seeing each other. They're dating. Same. Oh, my God. Thing. Rob, stop. It's about the same thing. It's not Rob. It's not a bad thing. It is the same thing. It's her trying to soften things with language while she gets the hell out of there. Are All you right. drinking again? No. All right. Rob. I just, I just work a lot. I'm tired. Rob, here's what you need to do, buddy. Don't, don't get caught up in her. Focus on your job. Focus yes. on sobriety. Focus on setting up your life in Alabama. Focus on you and what you got to do. Don't Absolutely. don't look back. We all have had relationships. We've had some regrets. Had some good times and some bad times. Yeah, Adam's had them more. Move he, forward. He felt bad like this. Got him back together and screwed him up again. Nah, a little bit yeah, bad. never going. That's what you do. Move on. Yeah, move on. All right, George, you find solenoid. Uh, yeah. I did actually. He did. Yeah. What's it say? Can I read it. Go ahead. <laughs> A coil of wire commonly in the form of a long cylinder that, when carrying a current, resembles a bar magnet, so that a movable core is drawn into the coil when a current flows. Oh, so boy. Fake-o. You just made that up. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll be back. Hey, yo, love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LVE-191. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving. Please go out there and make that cranberry sauce, ladies and gentlemen. Do not open that can. Do not open the can. The can opener should be left in the drawer mm. on Thanksgiving Day. Mm -hmm. Sack of cranberries. It's just, this is it. One sack of cranberries, one cup of water, one cup of sugar, saucepan, five minutes, cranberry sauce. Oh, hey, Adam. You're 28. What's up there, bud boy? Okay. I got a couple of, uh, some info for you. Um, you had mentioned the other day, like, a store that you wanted to set up that would sell embarrassing things. Shame on. Um, Shame on. Yeah, it was more of a drug store for people who were tired of being humiliated by crab shampoo and herpes cream. There's something similar. There's a, a website called um, shopinprivate.com. And they sell stuff like you can get like family-sized um, bottles of like light shampoo and, and like all these incontinent products and like small-sized condoms and things like that. Well, that that there that does sound like what I'm talking about. Except you should for, be the spokesperson for that. Can you use prescriptions? They don't use prescriptions though. See, that's the that's thing. So this is for would be your little hook, like because then you could have like the prescriptions for like Viagra and all that sort of stuff in addition to. Yeah, well, there will, I mean, there will be a section in the store for, you know, the uh, vibrators and the uh, Benoit balls. and Like any store. Rolling papers, things like that. But the main, the main crux of this business is going to be, is going to be embarrassing prescription items. And like I said, store hours, Drew? 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Well, street light to street light. Street light to street light, yes. I'm yeah, sorry. when the street lights come so on. Eight to five, maybe. Yeah, well, during daylight savings, right. it might be eight o'clock. Then during the winter, it might be 530. Okay. You know, when the street lights come on, we're open. When the street lights go off, we close. It's a nocturnal store. All right. Let's talk to uh, Rick, who's 23. Rick? Hey, what's up? What's up? Um, I was listening to, before my question, I was listening to the show before. I heard you guys... You were making fun of Jews. Jews? And I, yeah. Yes. I just wanted to, before my question, I just wanted to say that I work with a Jew, and he's a real great guy. He's a real nice guy. I don't I'm believe it. You guys are making fun of him. I don't believe it. What don't you believe? I work with a thousand Jews, and uh, they're all good guys. I'm talking about the Hasidic Jew. I'm a Jew. The religious Jews. I'm talking about religious Jews. I'm talking about the crazy hat, beards, and pants. No, I'm talking about the ultra-Orthodox Jews. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, it's, a ri it's ridiculous. I don't know what you're talking about. I work with this guy. He's a real nice guy. Where do you work? I work at a partnerships in a pizza shop. <laughs> what? More comical. What, what self-respecting Jew would work at a pizza shop? What's he wearing? What's he do? What do you mean, what's he wearing? He's dressed like a normal person. Yeah, he's not. He's not the Orthodox Jew. He is. He wears. He wears a white shirt and black pants. And he's got the. He's got the payos and uh, the hat. Yeah, but what's he, wrong with that? He's got the beard. Yeah, the trim beard. Does he's he, a great he, guy. Does he have to wear a net over his beard? Does he have to wear a, a net over his beard? Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. No net. 
Don't you got to wear a hairnet if you're working uh, in a pizza joint? No, you got to trim beards. It's New York. All right. All right. All right, Rick. I really appreciate you calling. All right, I just wanted to tell you one more thing. All right. <laughs> Is it ever good, Drew? The one more thing? No. I'm going to put together a whole hour of that. That's all you do to ever <laughs> You want to hear what the one more thing is? That's after the break. I dropped that anyway. I got to tell you one more thing. Anytime anybody from New York says, I got to tell you one more thing, run. And hold your ears and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. (laughs) Now, listen, listen, everybody. I don't want people to get the wrong idea. I love the Jews. Drew, favorite religion, right? Yes. But when it gets to a certain point, it gets a little goofy. And I'm not saying those are bad people. Don't worry. There are more of those people around. There'd be uh, less violence and less everything. But goofy religion, no doubt about it. And please, you idiots, you don't have to call the show and say, I work with a Jew. <laughs> He's a good boy. What are you talking about? That's all I work with. It's entertainment. We'll be back after this. <laughs> Dr. Drew, phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. All righty, Drew. Here we go. Back to the phones we go. Drew still reeling from his recent defeat in the Dictionary Challenge. Yeah, I'm depressed. He'll be back. I don't know, but when Matt comes back, I'll be ready for him. Oh, yes. Drew, if this will help soften the blow... I think I heard an Asian kid in the back. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, I think he had some help. I think he had some help. It's just his guardian angel. He probably had a a team of guys wearing headphones poised with the dictionaries open. Like, he had one guy for every letter. Mm Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They just lined up. That's right. You're in charge of A's. You're in charge of B's. As soon as you hear the word, just go. Go. Lynn? Yes. You're, uh, you're 38? Pardon me? Uh, what's yes, going I on in America? I'm 38. I'm pushing 39. And listen, let me just say this to the uh, the uh, Asian Defamation League. He's going to send me a letter. That's a compliment. <laughs> it's a compliment. <laughs> a letter. Jesus, everybody. All right, what's going on in the background, Lynn? In the background, there's so many other people talking, and they're talking about different other things. They can't believe that I'm listening to this radio station in the first place, but I heard this 14-year-old kid talking, and I just found out that my 19-year-old daughter is no longer a virgin, like, several couple weeks ago, and it's like... Couple weeks? Nick person. Try six years. Pardon me? Yeah. Are you drunk? Oh, well, no, actually, I'm not. I'm I'm actually working on it, though. Yeah, yeah you're almost I'm 38 right. years old, I can. Yeah. 19, no, you can't. 14, Nick, no, you can't. However, it's like I'm listening to these little kids talking about de-virginizing themselves, and mm-hmm. they have this option, and it, I'm so what, sorry. What's the option? Pardon me? What's the option? The option of... Geez, he's home alone. There's this girl that wants to throw himself, herself. That's his. Per- that's his. Her perception. Don't forget. It may not actually be his like perception. That. Yeah, it's his perception of this. No, that's his perception. That's right. Well, Lynn, Lynn, let's let's do a little math here. Uh, is that your only daughter? No, I have two. How old's your my oldest? That's your oldest. Yes. So when you got pregnant, you were 18. Barely. Barely 18. Yes. So when you started having sex, you were 16, 17. Oh, much younger. Okay. So now, now, now you're drunk and calling this crappy show. Yeah. So what kind of example are you? So maybe you want to talk about what the experience was like for you and why it wasn't such a good option. Exactly. And hey, that's the general. Well, we're waiting. We're waiting. Hey, well, that's the general idea that is I want to get. General. <laughs> hey, Lynn. <laughs> Lynn. 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 Yes. Uh, could you go into another room or perhaps tell the uh, biker gang that's in the background to yes, keep it I down will. to a Hold low, on, just one low roar? Thank you. <laughs> she's, she's trying to keep it together. She's just <laughs> Foster Brooks, come on, man. <laughs> she's working on it. Okay, here we go. Lynn? Believe it or not, they sent me into the bathroom. I'm, I'm going to hang up now. Okay, hang up. Hello? 
All right, Lynn. What's an improvement? What am I talking to? S- sounds like everything is going according to plan. Well, somewhat. Mm-hmm. You're standing in a bathroom talking on the phone. No, I'm sitting in the bathroom. Oh, much better. All right. I got the visual. Okay. Where's where, where she from? Where are you at, San Lynn? Diego. I'm in San Diego. But oh. isn't she there visiting? No, no, no. I actually live here now. Okay. We we heard you moved. We weren't sure where you went. But you uh, you uh, putting down stakes in San Diego. Yes. Okay. So you, you started having sex at a very young age. You had a child at 18. Extremely. And young. you want to talk about why that doesn't work. Because I was way too young. I lost my children at a young age. I got divorced. I, I missed all the experience of growing up with them. I have a lot of remorse about that. However, what I really want to say, and you're totally like missing the whole scope of what I'm trying to get at and what I called for in the first place is that this little young knit person and any young person who has those questions in their mind is like, he doesn't sound like he's ready for it. It sounds like he's, he's, he he's gonna do. Shut <laughs> <laughs> up! Right. And of course he's not ready for it. Right. That's what, that's no, right. Obviously he's. All right. What did we tell him? Yeah, well, you you told him don't do it, but but in a different way. I mean, he's not and ready for different it. than what? How many different ways are there? Well, because we're sober, I think is what no, she's saying. No, but she's not ready for it either. Well, we agree with she, that. Except right. she's already sexually so active. He said that she had three years uh, under her belt. But here's my question to you, Lynn. And I'm picturing those zingers coming out of her head right now. Those curly cues <laughs> flying up in the air like in a cartoon when someone is drunk. Are you leaning against the lamppost right now? And no, actually, I'm sitting rather. Steam coming out of yours. Are your eyes just? Are your eyes just X's? No, okay. not yet. All right, but <laughs> Lynn, don't make fun of this. No, no. I, listen, Lynn, you're calling the show to sort of enlighten us or, or or enlighten our listeners but didn't we tell the kid not to have sex if he wasn't ready that it was his perception that she probably wasn't coming over with the idea he thinks that she has that, that we were concerned about him not well, being supervised what I say is my 19 year old did not go there with the intention of having sex she was not drunk he was not drunk Something, the, the mood, something happened. If you're going to do yeah. it, be safe. Your your ni- 19-year-old, first off, <laughs> someone save... a very sa- responsible young so, girl. Someone saving, keeping their virginity till 19 in your family is a record. No, it's a record. Uh, all right, all right. Ooh, with the S for. <sighs> uh, 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 unfortunately. I know, I know, but I can't. I can't keep my I can't keep myself away from her. Sorry, Lynn. Listen to me. Yeah, Lynn. How what? How's life going for you? Going okay? For me, it's fine. You got? Are you are you living with your nineteen year old? No, I'm not. Who are you living She's with? In college. Okay. Who are you living with? Um, someone else. Does, well, what does that have come? How does that come in? You're into fat. Oh, Drew. Please. With. The all right, all right. That teenagers in this world are having yes. sex, and they don't understand right. they why don't. they're doing it. They don't, and we we have asked them not to do it. So I don't. Yeah, but but we're not telling them why they should not do it, and yet if they choose to do it, we're not supporting them in the idea as a parent that like, okay, I understand, I've been there, I've done that. If you choose to do it, I want to be there for you as someone who can talk to you. Well, while they're doing it? Don't you want to be supportive of them so that at least you can... It depends what age. It depends. 19, of course, that's the way to deal with it. The 13-year-old? No. Well, no, but okay, so... All right, all right. Lynn, we got to take other calls. No, so there's a 13 or 14-year-old out there that, like, doesn't have the supportive parent or anything. Right, their their parents are way on... Their parent is out of town. Parent is out of town on Thanksgiving. Left him home alone. All right. How Lynn, much of a parent do you think that woman's doing? Lynn, what about your other daughters? How are they doing? My younger daughter's doing very well. Do they live with you? No, neither of them live with me. She no. lost them when she was young. However, my 17-year-old daughter does have the option to go to her gynecologist at any given moment and get any 
support that she needs. That's good. Okay, Safety baby. precautions. That's good. That that's, right. that's right. That's right. At 17, that's just right. That's what we're doing on this show. We're spreading the word. All right, baby? Isn't that right? That's 17, yes. that's right. All right. All right, get drunk. Asta. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn, uh, Lynn should, uh, you know, Lynn, Lynn should do, she should get together with Bill Cosby and write a parenting book. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Tapes. Do's Books and don'ts. Tape. Look out for these pitfalls. I, why is it that... Uh, I, it's right, the only thing I ever think about on this show, and, uh, and 50 years from now when I'm just uh, cramping on myself, <laughs> sitting in one of those electric beds right. that reclines, right. make it 10 years from now, when I'm cramping myself in one of those <laughs> reclining beds, uh, I'm just going to think about the people who call this show repeat to us what about we what we said yeah. and then go on to explain that that's what they did yes. in their life right. which I find ironic Yes, you got three daughters, you had one of them you're pregnant before you're 18 you're drunk now you don't can't see your daughters quite sure them. where the three of them are yeah alright how many times have you guys been cornered by a woman like that, like in an event or bar? Uh, we've been we've been cornered by a few of those at yeah. an airport or uh, after the show at yeah. a uh, at a lecture. And uh, Drew always talks to him. <laughs> I'm always like, move on, <laughs> Drew. Am I right? You not move on. Just beat it. But it's uh, well, don't forget though. That as we try to move on, the, the reaction we get it's different than what you get from non radio. Yeah. It's like, oh, Mr. Big Shot. Well, Drew feels bad. I, I never do. I mean, look, here's my whole thing. Everyone's entitled to make mistakes. That's fine. Don't don't call me and t tell me I've made mistakes and then go on to explain all your mistakes. Jim? Hello? You're 28? Uh, actually, I don't know why, but I'm 29. <laughs> all right. What's 28 up? just came out. Um, That's all right. I had a question. I've recently, I just got through having two shoulder surgeries, and I'm going back into the field that I was in about eight years ago. Uh, hairdresser. Mm hmm. And I've. I've when, when was your last shoulder surgery? Uh. Four months ago, I think. What medication are you on now? Uh, hydrocodone and somas. Opiate. But Vicodin. Vicodin it. addict. Okay. Yeah. All right. True. Okay. Who are you talking to? These guys. The screeners? Uh, okay. Go ahead, Jim. I, so I'm pretty limited on what I can do. So I've got back into the hairdressing industry, and but my girlfriend of eight years. Is having a little bit of a hard time adapting, and it doesn't look like it's doing too well because of the jealousy bit. She's not really a jealous person. But how, how long have you been on drugs? Uh -huh. All told. All told. Uh, I mean, four months after a surgery, you shouldn't still be on Vicodin. So how long have you been? Uh, well, I'm still in physical therapy. Jim, you shouldn't still be on Vicodin four months after a shoulder procedure. How long have you been on Vicodin? All told. Um, well, I went through. I really don't know. I just recently got off of them about a month ago. Went through some really nasty withdrawals. I bet. Uh, so I only take them when I get through with physical therapy, and I'm, if I'm hurting real bad. And sometimes they've got me working out with weight. So it, how many vitamin? How many vitamin you take in a day? Uh, usually just one. One a day. I mean, at the most, yeah. Sometimes I'll take a half of one. Okay. I um I really don't like pain pills, and I really didn't like the addiction to them. All right. All right. So your girlfriend of eight years is jealous you're going back into the career well, that was basically mainly, your career? Yeah, pretty much. It's so much, it's mainly because I'm always around girls. I mean, it's just like four other guys and 70 other girls where I'm at. Right. Um, but so basically, like, if we all want to go to lunch, I'm going to lunch with a bunch of girls. Right, that you, that, you work, that you work with. Right. Yeah. Can you, or if I go out of town, it's with girls. You know, and in well, her defense, when she was, um, what do you, with, what do you, you know, go, what are you going out of town for like a, a blow drying show. seminar hair, or something? Hair show. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. Really? Um, we have a lot of style things we have to go to, um, pretty much nationwide. Keynote speaker, uh, Vidal, <laughs> Vidal Sassoon and Bob Prell. All right. So you well, maybe if you limit the out of town trips with the ladies, and do you really have to go out of town with a gaggle of ladies? Uh, why can't, why, to, I'm not really going with them, but we all end up at the same place. Why can't your girlfriend go with you? Uh, well, she does sometimes. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of times... Well, what have you done in the past that made her so nervous? Right. Have you ever cheated on her? Oh, yes. Uh, no, actually, I haven't. Uh, no. Uh, I'm not anyway. Uh, um, yeah, okay. well, she, you, you've, she yeah. doesn't trust you maybe because she shouldn't trust you. Am I right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, of course. I, uh, maybe. I really don't know. Well, well, there's no maybe. Either you cheat or you don't. Well, I haven't, but 
Then you say you haven't gotten right caught? I don't know what I'd decide. You know, it depends on the person, actually. All right, and your girl... All right, All right so she's picking up on this, so... So your girl... Uh, J Jim, Jim sounds a little sort of wishy-washy, like... Hold on a second. Jim uh, sounds like he's got a little sociopath in him. Just a little. A little addict, sociopath. But but a little. Yeah, light. Yeah, not, not full-blown sociopath, not full-blown addict, but uh, enough just to keep you off balance if you were mm -hmm. with him. Jim? Yeah, she, uh, she likes girls also, and I'm okay with that. There we um, go. I, I don't actually, you know, enter into any of it. It's pretty much her deal. So she's I'm seeing, fine. she's... <laughs> okay, it's, she, she sounds like a mess. <laughs> All right, what, what, you're not doing anything besides the Vicodin, huh? No, no. I'm you're not smoking pot every day? Oh, well, a random occasion. Okay. I don't, don't have time as much anymore. I used to. Don't drink, I, um, you don't drink every I'm day? With, I'm just recently fin fixing myself from being self-medicated for years. Yeah, okay. Oh, that, are you in a program? Yeah, no, I'm just doing it on my own. Well, you better get involved in a program, because I just, I just get addicted yeah, out of there. I kind of do, too. Jim? What kind of program? A 12-step program. Okay, now, I've, I've been in them, but... I pretty much ended up lying to him. Jim, you need to get you need to yeah, get him involved. Lying to him? Yeah. yeah, the whole um, the twelve steps. That's what sociopaths do. Right, all right, all right. That's what sociopaths do. Oh, Jim's like creepy. Oof. I mean, not creepy in the sense like he's going to kill you or anything. Kind of creepy in like, the uh, who's Jim? Does Jim know who Jim is? No. If you were in a relationship with Jim, would you feel at all like you knew who he was? And if he said he was going out of town for three days, you'd freak out. Would you think he was doing anything close to what he was saying he was doing? No. And you, would you ever think that? No. You got you, you can't trust a uh, straight hairdresser. <laughs> it's true. Well, way, I mean, he just he's a liar. He cheats, and he uh, his only his concern is getting caught. And that's he's in a he's an addict. He's using, but he lies when he goes into the program. It's just pretty serious stuff. Okay, he's and gonna get himself a lot of trouble. This here. chick seeing another chick. Yeah, it's total chaos. Maybe you should just give it. They've been together for eight years. Nothing's gonna happen. Maybe you should just give it a break. Or who cares? Really? I mean, listen. Does Jim care that much? He doesn't. Does he sound like? Yeah. No. I mean. You want to know who Jim cares about? Jim. Right. But not this Jim. My dad. Oh, my dad's your dad? Really? Jim. Oh, my. Yeah. yeah that's, that was well, he knows who Jim, your dad, is. That's he doesn't know who point. Jim we spoke to is. That's right, yeah. man. Yeah. He's never been to me. Karen. Yeah? What's up? You're 14. Yeah. Um, I called in Monday. Mm -hmm. You asked me, was a hymen? Right. And I was bragging to my mom about my conversation with some 41. And I was like, Mom, what's a hymen? And she's like, Oh, that's a, you know, certain part in a vagina, you know, that, that gets torn when you first do it. So. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, is that, is that it? That's it? Yeah. Oh, oh well, by the way, it... it How's that conversation going? Yeah, Mom? letter about Karen. Do you know what a hymen is? <laughs> yeah, I've been listening. Duh, I know what oh. is. What is, what is it? <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, love line reenactment there. Very nice, Anderson. Karen. At least I found out yeah. what it was. I hear so you know your mom is not lying, because if she's lying about what a hymen is, she'd be talking about a membrane a flower. That, that was inside of a car horn that reverberated <laughs> when it was right. hit with a, with a blast of electricity that made this toot sound. She wouldn't, she wouldn't start with the vagina. <laughs> That's how you know they're not lying. Well, um, I just want to ask you one question. Mm -hmm. yeah. You always have bad things to say about um high school then i would just i just want to know what do you have to say about taff high school <laughs> taff wonderful wonderful over there in encino on a on, on ventura boulevard there no it's it's in woodland hill i don't know yeah i guess is it on ventura boulevard mm-hmm yeah. Well, we were thinking yeah, good yes. things about it until yeah, we talked to Karen. Is, what, it, what, is what, it on ventura boulevard yeah and it's one town past encino yeah. Okay. That's the one then, right? So it's wonderful. Yes, it's wonderful. Yay. All right, baby. Okay, bye. Good times. Somebody's got to fill out that curve. You know, <laughs> what the hell? I named the street it was on. Was there, you know, it's like uh, Encino. It's on Ventura. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's true. It's it's uh, Woodland Hills. It's the... Next town from Encino. Yeah, it's a good high school. I think that's I heard. probably one of the one of the only decent uh, 
high schools in the valley. Hmm. Yes? I, I've heard. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's up in the hills. Yeah. It's sort of on the edge of the hills. Oh. Rich kids go there. Parents are involved. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Mm-hmm. Thomas? Yeah. You're 16? Yeah. What's up? Uh, I'd just like to say, uh, Adam, you're a comedic god. Drew, you're a genius. And uh, Anderson, you're awesome. Thanks. Uh, and uh, before I forget, uh, when does the Crank Angers with Dr. Drew come out? <laughs> um... Well, that'll be uh, part of the new season, and um, I think, and I don't know when Drew's uh, episode you know will, which one will we're air. I, I don't know. We haven't one. haven't done the editing yet, yeah. but uh, I would say uh, we're looking to get some new stuff on, I think, in February, so uh, Drew won't be too far behind. All right. Uh, uh, the problem is I just, like, compulsively, like, pick at myself, like, my nails, just pimples, or, you know, my arm, you know. I uh, just I pick up myself constantly. You pull and, hair too? Uh, no, not not so much the, the hair. Hand washing or any of those kinds of rituals? Huh. I wash my hands before I play guitar, but that's more because I want to keep the guitar strings clean. But you're not washing 45 times a day or anything like that. No, no. And are you doing anything else? You're I think concerta. It is that a uh, is that because I, I heard that like methylphenidate can uh, affect if if, like, if it's somebody's a, prescribing this for you or you're abusing it. Oh well, no, I take concerta daily. For uh, ADD, right? Somebody being prescribing it. But uh, and I heard that like methylphenidate can Thomas, make. Thomas, stay with me. Is somebody prescribing this medicine, or are you abusing it? Oh, somebody's prescribing it. All right, you got to go back to them and tell them you might be having a side effect. Because picking is a side effect of stimulants. Right. Really? Yeah. What about picking and grinning? That's a side effect. Picking of, and a grinning. That's side effect of living in Kentucky. Yeah. That's a side effect from blowing the cider jar. That's right. All right, hey, uh, pick, picker syndrome is a real common thing with stimulants, and right. uh, you know that's what happens. And you're you're 16, eh. mm-hmm. so no. Well, what? It's a concern. Mm-hmm. You might be getting that from the from the long acting Ritalin. All right, so is that what the cert is? Yeah, it's a long acting Ritalin. Mm-hmm. Maybe take one a day mm-hmm. and just last. And what mm-hmm. Ritalin? What do you take? Three a day? Mm, no. Yeah, I took three. I just took I took three Ritalin a day at each meal. You did when you were taking Ritalin. Yeah. Okay. Three, three times a day you took it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's usually twice a day, but... Right. Well, there you go. Hey, Thomas? Yeah? Yeah, go uh, go talk to uh, the guys prescribing this, psychiatrist, your doctor. All right. All, All right. right there, buddy, but good times there, right? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. All right, have a uh, good Thanksgiving. All right, thanks. All also, right. the diagnosis may be off. I mean, that, that kind of picking stuff can also be part of OCD, and maybe the ADD was actually OCD, not, not ADD. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got to go to break. Uh, let me say this quickly about Thanksgiving and... You know, the culinary, the subject of uh, culinary dealings on on the uh, festive day. I let's don't outsmart yourselves, people. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. You know, a lot of people like to do some duck, or they like goose. to do some. They they'll, they'll do goose. Eh, it's foul. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm half on board with that, but. Uh, th- they'll screw with things. Mm-hmm. They'll take the cranberry. And th- my grandmother was pitching this to me. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I got a great recipe out of Harper's. Uh, mm-hmm. You take, uh, you know, you take fresh basil and you take walnuts and you take zest of. And it's like, eh, th- th- don't don't screw with it. And here, here's what I'm saying: Do you eat so much turkey stuffing? candied yams and cranberry sauce during the year that you've had an ass full of it come Thanksgiving? Right. Or is this pretty much something you eat once a year? So once a year, we could do this. Mm-hmm. Don't F around. Don't, don't, don't start getting in, uh, don't start getting into the, the lamb and the veal. D- don't start screwing with the different sauces. Don't outsmart yourself. Get the green beans, get the mashed potatoes, get the stuffing, Ladle the gravy on and enjoy. It's not, uh, it's, uh, we're not building a piano, as we used to say in the construction field. Good times. All right. Hey, everybody. Love line. Hey, man. I'm going to ask Dr. Drew. Let's uh, hop back to phones. What do you say there, partner? Let's do. All right. I'm Jenny. Excited about Thanksgiving. Me too. Jenny. Hi there. You're 20. Yes. Let me tell you something, Jenny. I'll tell you why uh, Drew is so excited about Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. I don't, don't clue myself on this. At a certain point, if you make money, you don't get excited about stuff you got to buy or even stuff you're going to get 
because either you're buying something for somebody or you're getting a present that you could have got yourself or would have got yourself already. But the only thing you look forward to is eating. <laughs> Am I right, Drew? Like, think about what you look forward in, it, to in life. Everything's a chore now. Nothing's exciting anymore. Christmas is a bust. So, this is why eating. I spend all that time ruminating about cars, see? You start, once I buy it, it's like, oh, eating. not fun anymore. Eating, right? Eating, yeah, That's yeah. what you got. Yeah. Okay. Jenny? Yes. What's sex up? Sex is still okay. Sex and eating. Well, that's what I was talking about. What, what's up, baby? Um, I am 20 years old. Like I said, I have a boyfriend that's quite a bit older than me, old enough to be my father. Mm -hmm. I feel like we've gotten past a lot of that point now as far as agreeing with it and being okay and guilt-free with the relationship as far as the age is concerned. Guilt-free? Right. Who feels guilty? Well, Michael had for a long time just because mm -hmm. he's old enough to be my dad. So. How old is he? He is 50. He's 50. Right. He's 5 0 and you're 2 0. Well, how long have you been going out? Six For about years. a year and a half, we met at work. Actually, I used to work where he worked. He, was he your boss? No, he was not. He was just a co worker. He really should. At age 50, it should be a couple rungs up the ladder over the 18 year old. Who's yeah. working there, right? It was me going after him mostly. We became friends and we were. Close, just as far as talking and pretty casual stuff. What like. is it that he does for you at 50? Why, why are you so attracted to him? She likes I, a touch of gray around the balls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he is very um, Slow. laid back, easygoing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he's tired. Right. Wait, waiting to right. die. Uh, that's probably part of it. Yeah. No, he, he and I like, like the same kind of music, the same kind of things mostly. We, as far as religious stuff like that she likes uh jerry lewis and the playboys oh wait gary lewis and the playboys huh. that's right oh, rude. who do you listen to what music because i love like classic rock and especially soul from the 60s right. stuff like that good good well, that's his modern music though yeah wait he doesn't know he died is is he uh well he says maybe you're an old soul oh please that's personally what I think. Oh, yeah, that's God. what I thought. Old you're, soul without a dad. You're, magically. You're Sagittarius, right? No, I'm not. Je Gemini. No. So you, um, you didn't have a dad growing up, right? Leo. Leo. Here's the deal. Leo. I the Leo. Whole, no, I'm Virgo. The Virgo. Virgo. I knew Just it. Like I knew it. Old soul. <laughs> Here's Virgo. the deal. What, Jenny? What's that? What's the deal? What's the deal? Um, I processed through the father figure thing before... I d entered the relationship with Michael. That way, that that is, makes absolutely no sense. She processed it. Yeah, you processed it. You identified that's why you're attracted to no, this guy. No, that's, that's what I thought about first. I right. wanted to make sure that he wasn't going to be daddy to me. Right. And where is your dad? He is not really involved in my life. Of course we, not. We, Hold on. Let me pick Drew up. I'm shocked. Shocked <laughs> to tell you. I know. And this is right. the whole... Well, as long as you checked it off the list. <laughs> All right. So it's just a coincidence, Joe. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And it's not a coincidence. It is a big part of my life. However, Michael doesn't fit it just that. No, I, I'm not saying he has to play the role yeah. of your father, but that could That's, be some of the reason you're attracted to him. Of I think for me, whoever I'll be with will be a protective kind of male role. Okay. Think, the no problem with the, the kinds of people you'll tend to pick is that they'll be exactly the kind of guy just like Dad. And they'll be a, eventually end up in kind of a power imbalance, and there'll either be some sort of abuse, exploitation, or abandonment. Mm, what hap what happened to your dad? What where'd he go? He we he actually lives pretty close. We talked to each other once in a great while. My mom and him are divorcing, but and and didn't he? I thought he split when you were younger. He, no, 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 no. Uh, he was around. Yes, yes, but it wasn't a close situation at all. Why not? Um. When I was younger, I believed there was something wrong as far as sexual abuse goes in the family. I don't remember anything, but I feel like I knew a lot of details about sex mm -hmm. that a really young toddler shouldn't know. Old soul. Was it him doing that to you? I feel like it's a good possibility because when my sister, who was born when I was 14, when she was two years old, that would make me 16, she was abused by my dad. Oh, boy. And there's not a question in my mind about well, that. Well, so there you go. But... Well, how do you know that, by the way? Oh, she talked to my sister-in-law about it. Oh, okay. she, she's now living with them, but... Mm. So that's my dad. All right. 
All right. Well, there you go, baby. Does this your 50-year-old friend have any kids? He does. He has a daughter. <laughs> How's that going? Are you, are you older than her or younger? The same age. Same age. That's even worse. <laughs> Has he done anything to her? No. He, Michael, is actually pretty, I mean, as far as I know, he talks to his daughter a lot. Yeah, but did he do anything to her when she was young? Let me no. tell you what he says. Don't say anything to the cops. <laughs> no. All right? All right, I'll call you tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Phone rings this time tomorrow. Hi. Don't say anything to the cops. Yeah. Jenny? Yes. All right, babe. Well, listen. You're attracted to the guy. You're with the guy. He treats you right. Right? For the most part. I'm just wondering. My For the most part. Is there any, any problems? Yes. What's the problem? He's gotten better as far as the commitment and actually saying we're together and actually telling his family members and things like that. But I'm wondering how to communicate and come to a compromise on things that I understand that with the age difference, he's going to want to go out a lot less and kind of yeah. be a little bit more laid back. And that's All something right. I have to understand. But All right. Laid back. He's, he's tired. He's old. He's like me. He's waiting for the Grim yeah. Reaper. He's listening to back. AM radio with a b battery that has a flashlight. This is a <laughs> flashlight radio siren with the crank in it. <laughs> wah, wah, pedal. All right. All right listen, Jenny. Uh if and you were molested by your father, and it sort of sounds like you think you were early in life, you should probably get a little therapy. You, you should definitely get some therapy for yeah, that. Yeah. And then while you're in therapy, you can discuss your current relationship. Right. Because you've not processed anything about your father. You haven't yeah. begun that process and, of processing. And there's, there's going to be a lot of inherent uh, problems with a 30-year gap. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, the guy's not going to want to go to the disco every night. Oh. Mike? Sleeping. Uh, Mike? You can't be sleeping yeah. for a whole yeah. eight minutes. Right. What's up, Mike? Um, well, I like to, uh, I like to drive. I have a problem. I like, I don't know, I just feel really a lot of shame about, uh, I like to drive past, uh, pretty girls in my car and masturbate. I don't want to meet them. I don't want to talk to them. I don't want to, you know, have anything to do with them. It just turns me on to do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm, so they so they know what you're doing and they can see it. Yeah, so they can see it. And then once I go or whatever, I don't. You know, I just go. I just leave. You know, I don't. I usually do it like you know on on a road, on a highway, whatever. And I, I'm in my car and I just pass. I just pass them. Cool. And I feel uh, a lot of shame about it. And I feel like I'm really strange to do that. Mm -hmm. and I was just wondering, yeah. is that normal? <laughs> is it illegal? It's and, not normal. You know, it, yes, it, uh, it is illegal. No and yes. Yeah, no and yes. It's not normal. It is illegal. It is a form of sexual compulsivity, and it needs treatment. Where do you find these hot chicks on the highway? I I just, I mean, when I'm driving, if I pass one, then, you know, I don't want to, you know, well, if there's a guy in the car, I would never do it. Well, well, wait a minute. If you pass one who's driving? Yeah, I pass them while they're driving. And you pull up next to them? This, yeah. this By the way, this is like a trying to uh, refuel a fighter jet in yes. mid-flight yes. in, in, in the middle of a bombing of a, raid. In the middle of a storm. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you're trying to beat off and downshift uh -huh. and get even with this chick uh -huh. and look at her through the passenger side. Oh, my God. Wow, I don't even know if I could pull that uh, that uh, one off. Wait Mike a second. Uh, Mark? Mike. I mean, Mike, you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're pulling up next to so her. They're in their car. Yeah. And they're both driving. Yeah, and how is it that they know you're beating off? I don't know. If they don't. I mean, if they don't see me, I don't care. It just. Well, I'm guessing they wouldn't see you, would they? Well, yeah. I mean, if I pace, like if I'm pacing with them or whatever, if I'm going the same speed they, they are, they kind of look over and kind of catch their attention. Like, yeah, what? what? What does a guy look like who's uh, Tara? Don't call me Tara. God damn it! Says this is uh, happening to her. I'm sorry. I didn't know it was you. It was late. <laughs> you must have been driving get on the, a rental get on the car. Mic here. Get on the mic, Terry. Terry, get get on the get mic. Get on the mic. Okay, but listen, when the I, I, you know, if you're driving, what kind of car do you drive? I'm not gonna. I feel a lot of shame about. It. I would hate. All right, what what type of car do you drive? Is it a it's SUV, a four door car? A, a you know, a normal car. Regular. So, Terry, what, I don't hear what happened here. What happened to you? Yeah, Terry. I was driving, and some guy is getting pretty even with me and he's like yelling out the window so I rolled down my window and he's like woo you're hot woo and I'm like thanks and he's all of a sudden he said something and I couldn't understand it I'm like what he's like do you like 
Oh. Oh. <laughs> she just yelled the C word out of the air. Okay. Well, that's what he said. Do you like... Mm -hmm. Do you like penis? penis? Yeah, yeah. Continue. Is it back on? Uh, yeah. yeah, and you... Yeah. And so I'm like, what? And he said it again, and I'm like, ew, get away. And he's like... Here he's comes like, the F um, word, Do you want to see mine? And he's all, like, fidgeting, and I'm like, oh. So did he, did he pull it out? What? I didn't hear Did you, you see his pee-pee? And see, I like kept looking straight, and it was uh, right, but he, wa he wasn't he was masturbating. Fidgeting. He was fidgeting around. He was doing something. He was trying to get it out. Yeah, he wasn't masturbating. And then she thought a pigeon crapped on her windshield, but it <laughs> turned out <laughs> it was Adam. All right, all right, but that that's not that's not quite the same. Similar. Yeah, Mike. we'll do a reenactment in the parking lot after the show. Did uh, were you uh, sexually abused or physically abused growing up? Well. I was uh, I was actually molested by a yeah. girl when I was right. uh, probably about six years old. I was kind of forced to go down on her. I didn't really know what I was doing. All right. Well, this this is the remnant of that, and you need to have this treated. You do. Well, you do. All right. Can you stop no, doing it? I mean, you can't I stop. still you're gonna you're gonna get an accident. By the way, that's how they're gonna find you, clinging to life in your dork. Yeah. All right. So don't do it, Mike. But I. No, this is a compulsion. This is, right. this is the sexual abuse consequence. I'm, I'm still curious logistically how this works. He slides up next to somebody. I just think about it. when it comes to masturbating, guys can figure it out. I know he's Whatever pacing someone. He's looking at him. I mean, I'm not so sure that they know what he's doing, other than they're creeped out that he's following them or and pacing looking at them, them with an intensity that's weird. Right. All right. Let's go for a little break here, Drew. Yeah, I'm ready. Wait, we're not doing that lightning round when we come back. Oh, we? well, it's the time. Oh, we are. You gonna do it? Let's take one more call then. All right. Because I don't want to get uh, too far into the lightning round. But you know, I do have uh, the reverb mm. this time. So you know, this could re really be a monumental lightning round. Ashley. Yeah. Hi. You're, you're 18. What's up? Um, <laughs> this is kind of embarrassing, but I do know what my hymen is, and I'm having a slight problem with it. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I've been sexually active since I was 16, and I've had about five partners. And my first partner, um, you know, lost my virginity to nothing big. Well, about a couple months ago, I was having sex with another guy, and I, I had sex with him, and I had a lot of pain from it and bleeding. It was completely like losing my virginity over again. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I noticed that there was bleeding for about two weeks, spotting pretty much. Then I went to my gynecologist, and I figured, you know, part of my hymen was torn because mm. I guess it wasn't fully done the first couple times. Mm. Mm. So uh, she said that's exactly what happened, and it hangs down. And I was wondering, I heard that you could get clipped, but, I mean, is it really worth it? Is there anything you need to worry about? No, you're, now you're done. Well, it'll slough off, right, at some point, Drew? That's what I was wondering. Is it, like, ever going to, like, fall off or something? No, you're fine. Just don't. You're fine. You, all the, the rest of it's been taken care of. Well, what about the mud flap hanging from her? No, <laughs> nothing. Why don't you write uh, back off on it and put Yosemite Sam's picture on it where he's holding the guns? Or yeah, I'll get, like, a tattoo or something. Yeah. yeah picture the, the Mancho girl. Yeah, the yeah. The girls. Yeah, you get those chrome chicks with the big boobs, the silhouettes that are back of the truck mud flaps. So it isn't going to fall. It's going to fall off. I, I think she has a misconception about what is in there. It's going to be fine. Okay. Yeah. We'll uh, take a break. Be back with the lightning round after this. The life has grown out on Radio North America. <laughs> I tell you what, kids. I tell you what, Drew. I got myself a fifty thousand watt flamethrower here, and I'm gonna rock the house right now. I'm saying, blah 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 blah. These rock all good all the part of it. Doctor Drew, and I'll tell you what, Drew. I am this close to dropping drow. <laughs> I'll tell you, you only know, tell you something about ladies, Drew. Uh, some, uh, some go, some blow. All right, <laughs> checking the real thousand. Al Alhambra, 44. Fountain Valley coming in, 47. The weather. Pasadena, 48. Norwalk, Chile, 51. Fontana, 50. Northridge coming in, 53. Cerritos checking in at 55 degrees. Long Beach, 51. And Tustin, 49. <laughs> I tell you something. <laughs> Boy, I 
tell you what, there, fellas. Welcome, Candy, to the stage. Candy, Candy. Charlene, stage five. Charlene, Charlene, to the Bay West room. To the Bay West room. That's that love show you appreciate. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, blah, 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 blah. All right, there, Drew. Let me get the phones real fast. You ready to go here? Hmm? Yeah. Right, right. First, yeah. let me check in a little traffic. That circuit day coming up. Boy, I'll tell you what, boy. I'm going to be eating myself some turkey tomorrow. Nah, boy, it'll trip the fan. Oh, I'll drop it down. Wow. I'll tell you what. Let's check, the, let's check traffic real fast. Four or five, look out for brake lights. One ten, slow and go. Five, got a big rig. Collided with a Razor scooter, so watch out for that. Highway Patrol on the scene. And on the four level, there's a box ring in the number three light. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the phones. Tara! Yeah. Tara, 24. I <laughs> love life. That's great. Al Hammer checking in 44, Fountain Valley 47. This is Tara. Don't call me Tara, goddammit. Love the same. Love. Tara, let me check the time real fast. All right, let it's 11.49 and 15 seconds. That's 10 minutes and 45 seconds away from the top of the hour. Straight up, I'm Ace Rock Coles. I can there, partner, Dr. Drew. He is hot, hot, hot. No, checking in at 51. No, Fontana, 50. Tara, what's the question? I'm alive. I'm sorry? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks for your call, baby. Sending out a windbreak. Sick time real fast. Well, first off, Norwalk checking in 51, Fontana 50, Northridge 53, Cerritos 55, Long Beach checking in 51, and Tustin at Chile 49. I'll tell you what, they're juicy. Ready to get back to phones there, Prada? I'm this close to Trump and Trout. I'll tell you that right <laughs> Candy stage five, candy stage five. <laughs> Charlene to the main rise room. Jennifer's on line four. Let's check her out. What's going on? I cracked myself up. What's going on there, Jennifer? 15 years old. What's happening? <laughs> I got asthma. I'm sorry. I got asthma related condition. I'm sorry. Well, I'll live long. <laughs> Check the time real fast. 11 50 and 20 seconds. That's nine minutes and 40 seconds away from the top of the hour. Straight up. You're smack down a little bit of light around. Fastest 19 minutes around. What's happening there, baby? Talk to me. Well, I promised my boyfriend that I would have sex with him. Mm -hmm. so, and slow and go on the 405, by the way, Drew. Yeah, go ahead. And I'm. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to. Police activity? But mm -hmm. I don't. Mm hmm. Al Hammer checking in 44, Fountain Valley 47. Yeah. What's up there, Jennifer? Well, I guess I'm scared. I mean, I've uh, already. Like, I've, I've only given a guy a blowjob. Yeah. It was <laughs> Best one I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. She's underage. I don't go there, but I'm just going to drive and drop. Hold on a second, Jeffrey. I'm sending out a windbreaker. Let's check the time real fast. 11.51 and 7 seconds. That's 8 minutes and 53 seconds away from the top of the hour. Straight up. It's a light around. It's fast. There's 11 minutes in radio. What is this? Line 4, Jennifer. Jennifer thinking about having a uh, with the boyfriend, huh? Doing a little bump and grind. Doing a nasty with the boyfriend, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah right, but right. you don't want to. Too young there, baby. Yeah. I gave the blowjob to wasn't my boyfriend. Wasn't your boyfriend. But let me tell you this. Pass you check it in 48, Norwalk 51. Jen, if you don't want to do 50. this, you, 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 if you're saving yourself That's for right. him, Slow he can, go on the continue to save five, and have to take it away. Break lights. All right. Um, okay, but, like, he wants my boyfriend... Wants to go down on me. <laughs> to pleasure him. Well, no, but no, no. Jennifer, don't do it, everybody. Don't do it, don't do it. You're fine. Oh, 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 Lots of time. Oh, Relax. Oh, Take oh, your time. Yeah, that's what they told me when I was in high school. I'll tell you what, I was this close. This close to dropping trout. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's check it in traffic real fast. Look out for brake lights on the four or five. Five CHPs on there. Look out for uh, big a mattress in lanes, in lanes, and slow and go on the 101. Watch out, a uh, big rig, a nuclear armament truck colliding with a moped with a midget on it. So watch out for that CHP on the seat. Let's hop back to the phones real fast here. Drew's you're in a row here. Brad, my main man, what's going on? You're 15 there, buddy. Welcome to the Fast 11 Minutes of Radio. It's a lightning round. What's happening, my brother? My mother. That's it. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I, I love, 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 love doing radio. I'll tell you what I say. Didn't get enough attention from my parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah geek in high school. La, la, la. Now blow hard. La, 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 la. Everyone's got to listen to me. La, la, la. All right, Bram, what's your question there? Hey, um, I got I got heads from this one girl. Yeah, I got a head. <laughs> Best one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. 
And ever since then, but ever since then, it's hold, been hold on a second, Brad. Hold on a second. Candy stage four. Candy stage four. And uh, Bernadette going to need you in the velvet room. There's a whole ass load of Arabs out there. <laughs> I'll tell you what. What's uh, going on? Get yourself a little BJ. A little slobbing on the knob. And a little licky on the peckaroo. Am I right there, Bradsky? 15 years old. Tell you what, buddy. I have a lava. Let's check the time real fast. 11.53 and 46 seconds. That is six minutes and 14 seconds away from the top of the hour. Straight off the light. Yeah. Four or five. Look out for brake lights. Don't go on the one and one. What's up there, Brad? Um. Yeah. No, oh, Brad, you got turned right on that part. Let's just check the weather before we go to break here, Drew. Oh, I am checking in at 44. Fountain Valley, 47. Pasadena, 48. Norwalk checking in at 51. 51! Is there wind? Yeah, they're checking in. <laughs> they're checking in at 51. Four and a half knots out, out of the south. Southwest. 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 Southwest.